Welcome back to the shop, guys. Um, I, um, when I first bought the mini lathe and then the mill, no clue what I was doing. And there was nothing out there on YouTube that could help me. So I had started this channel to help others. And it turns out at that time, I guess it was a big time phase, fad or whatever. People were asking me stuff left and right. Um, since then, it's kind of died, and the 3018 CNC with the laser has been, um, for quite a while, the, the biggest thing, biggest fad, helping people out with that. It seems that the um, <laughs> mini lathe and mill are coming back. I'm getting a lot of questions. So, in this video, I'm going to a bunch of emails asking me what cutters do I use on the lathe, the mini lathe, and how do I get the nice finishes and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to share um, my experiences, what cutters I use and why, and then at the end I'm going to show how I get, um, how I find absolute rotational center to a thousand um, and a number of people have asked me why do I why am I so critical why do I want to be right on a thousand and if you think about it now this is just my thoughts um, if you've got a nice tool you know you got a sharp edge here and you've got the divot in here and you're on the center the tip the razor sharp tip is cutting the material and the chips are just kind of curling off the top. Um, if you're a thousandth below rotational center, is the tip cutting or is it just kind of scraping the material off? If I'm below, I do see a difference in the finish and it, the cutter, you know, the insert is more susceptible to chip welding. It starts piling up and then you don't have a cutter tool anymore. So uh, at the end, I'll show how I get, uh, how I find rotational center. And first though, I'm just gonna do a quick little um, final, just show um, where I ended up with that precision level that I made. So hope this helps somebody and see you next time. I'm not sure if the lighting is that, uh, the lighting is pretty bright. Move it to the side, looks better. Okay, by popular demand here, um, zoom in real close. Following up on this guy, I'm not going to really go any further with it, but you can see what I did. Um, this side, I JB welded, used JB weld in here, so this is solid. I oversized this a little bit more and I put some silicon in there so this can flex so now this allows me to just fine-tune this thing I got a pretty heavy-duty spring in there and I also want to need I need to get some matching uh, socket head screws so it looks better that I will do whenever I go to my supply place I uh, didn't do anything with the bottom though um, yeah, I had screwed this up. I had set this for a socket head and then I realized I should have just threaded it. So I made a little plug to go in there. Looks like I can probably a bunch of scratches, clean this up a little bit more. But So that's it. I'm pretty happy with it. I think you guys uh, saw just how sensitive it is. Alright, I want to talk about all the different cutters here. Specifically for a mini lathe how you get nice finishes or how I get great finishes. What I've learned over the years here, experimenting and playing. Um, first of all, this is a mini lathe. It is not as maybe robust, solid, strong or whatever as a full size lathe. I have over the years gotten a lot of comments on my videos that I'm doing things wrong. Um, well, it's because you're on a full size lathe and you have no clue. I, I don't want to offend anybody, but you know, I don't think 
you have a clue what it is with a mini lathe. It flexes, it moves, and you have to learn how to deal with that to get the finishes and the work that you want done, done. Um, and again, uh, not again, but I'm theorizing this on a large lathe because I haven't run. The last time I ran a full-size lathe, I was in the eighth grade making a screwdriver for shop class. So I can't remember anything about it. Um, so my thoughts on a large lathe are theories. Um, when you're turning, it's longer gives, less likely to uh, bend, tweak, move, more mass, changes harmonics to the entire lathe, keeping chatter down, and so on. So, um, start with basic stuff. I, I think everybody knows I basically do aluminum. I like aluminum. It's cheap. It's strong enough, you know, all, I, I don't see any difference between any of these aluminum holders and a steel holder. None. Um, these guys are like eight, nine years old. There's no wear on them. They still fit snug in the quick change tool post. So I'm happy with aluminum. <clears throat> I do turn steel. There's steel in here I'll show in a minute. Uh, I don't like steel because it gives nasty shards. It gets in your fingers and you're trying to get it out with your tweezers. Gets in your shoe, gets embedded in your foot. So steel is not that much fun uh, for me. But again, I do uh, some things with steel when it's necessary. So starting with the basic um, cutters here. These, I've talked about them before, these are specifically for aluminum. I think these are TCMTs. Um, I've talked about them in other videos and so on, and they give, you know, this one I just quickly was making this tool here, so I wasn't too interested in perfect finishes, but I can get just in, insane finishes. Um, <coughs> this is the main tool for turn no this one is sorry this is for chamfering that i use so i'll put that to the side um and all of these tools you need to really put them on rotational center and i'll show a segment in one of these videos coming up on how i um find absolute perfect rotational center within a thousandth and then i set these guys on a comparator stand and set the height um, in the early days, I used to do this, so it was fixed. Now I'm just doing nuts and things. I still need to get parts for him. Um, a lot of people see me turning f this way. You know, I'll go into the work and I'll come out and they scream at me, you're going wrong, it's supposed to be straight, and going this way. Well, um, the difference is, again, many lathes move. If I'm cutting this way, you can see the force is constant out. The force is constant pretty much so down, you know, other than variations in hardness of the material. Um, and you're cutting a hole, you know, you're, you're like smoothing the surface like a butter knife. So I get fantastic finishes that way. If I come in straight, I'm cutting an entire wall and everything keeps changing and the finish comes out like that. I don't know if the camera can really see it. I'll angle it, but there's ridges all over the place. It's rough and it's miserable to um, sand down and try to get the look nice. If I do it this way, uh, I gotta take this guy apart and tighten him up. This is 1144. So this is pretty hard, and I've discovered the harder the material, the nicer the finish you get. There's the finish on 1144 going like that, you know, at an angle. I go in and I go over. So uh, put him to the side, all this stuff, my rivet nut setting tool, and I'm still working with. So that's aluminum. The aluminum would basically, the second you find the right insert here, um, it, the whole world just changes. For steel, these are just general purpose carbide uh, inserts. 
Yeah, they're not really anything special. I can get a good finish with these on aluminum doing my technique. Let me get rid of this thing because that's a lot of light, I'm guessing. Um, but I mainly use these for roughing on steel and aluminum and deep cuts. And also a lot of comments I've had, gee, you know, you're going to take forever here taking 10,000 cuts. I would have done it. Take a 50,000th cut and I'd be done in seconds. Well, yeah, in seconds I'd have a broken lathe. It's not going to handle that depth. Um, average, when I'm coming down to finishing, I'll do a 5,000th depth cut. Trying to take material away, I'll do 10. I don't know if I've ever done 15. I would not do 15 on any steel, though. So these guys, just general purpose. Um, Guy, pretty cheap cobra carbide i think these were too or some so that's those guys everybody's falling down move him out of the way okay now this guy and you got to make him razor sharp and get all the edges this is the tool that did this finish and did the same thing in and over um this cuts any steel like butter i'm not this guy uh, I got turned on to, and it was doing a good job, but I don't know what happened. I turned the uh, insert around. It wasn't, I was trying to make this part with this, and I was not getting a good finish at all. So I switched over to this guy. Goes in like butter, and just beautiful finish on it. Uh, very minor sanding has to be done. So these are hard. To make by hand I've got the universal tool grinder so I could easily make this guy and I've got one for both lays because you can see different kind of holder than this one for this goes for the other second lay and this is my first lay that I ever bought so this is a fantastic tool uh, for any steel I imagine I could run down on aluminum beautifully too if I get a finish like that so this guy, yeah, um, I got turned on to it. I think it was Dan's Hobbies, his YouTube channel, sent me an insert, and it was doing great. So I've got to figure out what's going on. I, maybe the height changed or something on it, but um, this was a good guy, and I'm sure I'm going to get it back. This guy I just made, D-Bit. Uh, it mounts this way so I can do chamfering inside of a hole because it's rounded and I can do outside chamfering but mainly made this guy because a lot of times I need to chamfer the inside of the hole and you cannot do it with this guy because that's in the way it hits so nice guy again i've got to make a nice lapping or honing disc so i can hold it solid I'm trying to do it by hand you move and you just don't get a perfect edge boring tools um this was given to me carbide this is an incredible tool for boring it gives a gorgeous finish wish i could find another one um uh, no longer in contact with the machinist that gave it to me but I use this guy a lot um, it takes material away you can do like a 15,000th cut with this no problem no chatter nothing this guy I bought the entire criterion set and this is this is my favorite right here you want a nice finish you want to do precision cuts look on ebay someplace get the criterion boring bar set or um you may have to just because they're in demand you might have to just look for them one at a time and see if you can find it record video oh it is recording okay it looked like it wasn't recording i don't see a dot going so okay it scared me one time i got halfway through my lecture or whatever and the camera had shut down. As far as boring bars, there's different types here. This guy, stay away from on a mini lathe. If you look at the tip very closely, and Stefan did a nice lecture on this, Stefan Goswinter, a recent video. It's got a negative rake. 
This creates far too much force on the lathe. I have used it, it does work, but you gotta go slow. So I think I just, yeah, I just made this holder for this thing because it pokes out so far. That was the other thing. You're limited as to the diameter of what you can do. Because when you mount this thing, it's so far in. I think with this setup, I can finally get to a half inch diameter. But this one, um, I think this was a micro grain or something, uh, M M100 or whatever. The flat guy, this does work nice. Is he getting clogged up? Yeah, I think there's something on the tip. Because I used him on the, making these steel things. Um, flat, yeah, I gotta look at that under the microscope. I have to rehone that. The flat guy is nice, um, but it does go in, it does work. But what I did was, you can buy these all over the place. They're cheap, high speed steel. You need to have some positive rake. I don't know if you can see it, but I put it in the tool grinder and angled it down and honed this thing so this edge is ridiculously sharp uh, on the stone. He's got junk on him too? No. No, he's fine. Uh, this just goes in there like butter. Burt, and you part it off, groove it. You can actually go sideways with either of these two tools. They're nice and sharp on the sides. So um, that's my go-to for parting or actually this is my go-to for grooving. This is my go-to for parting. Um, threading tools, if you're gonna get into threading, uh, just learned recently. These guys are great, but the point on them does not allow you to do like an 18 threads per inch because it's too deep. <laughs> it hits this face and you can't go deeper so i had made this a long time ago and then just put the positive rake on it here with the tool grinder and this will do anything it's just a gorgeous tool so i need to make a holder to dedicate for that tool so if i'm going to do a small fine threads i'll use this guy if i'm going to use the larger threads i'll use this guy many times <clears throat> all of this was made with just threading dies actual re-threading dies oh i got a burr in there <laughs> oh he's gonna break loose right uh oh, break him loose later oh well, yeah yeah it's steel i don't want that in my finger so so um and on materials if you want to use plastic any tool will work it comes out gorgeous no matter what you do <laughs> facing this that generally i use my aluminum inserts on plastic wood again doesn't matter what you use making my own little drawer knobs here so um and steel i already said which tool that i use <coughs> so that's kind of just um years worth of experience in my comments Hopefully the light is pretty good, but uh, many have emailed me and asked how do I figure out where absolute rotational center is to set my tool height. So this is simply the method that I came up with where I can tell even to a half a thou um, <laughs> where it is. First thing you do is I turn this guy. So I know I've got a nice, perfectly turned uh, to rotational center, <laughs> outside edge. Um, next thing is, you can see the dial indicator here um, and the particular holder, Noga. From past experiences, um, you have to be rock solid. If this gives at all your measurement, of course, it's going to be off. Um, this guy I like a lot because I can make it really solid and I can tell because I can raise and lower this as many times as I want and the needle falls exactly on the same spot every time and I can actually, my arm's probably in the way, I can actually adjust this thing and put it dead on to zero. I rotate that's the other thing if I can rotate this dial and that needle does not move I know I am solid 
So I've got some measurement. I mean, the, the stem here is pushed up slightly. So I'm on this surface. Zero the dial out, have this turned. So now I can um, take the saddle over and I can lift it up and measure the distance from here to the top surface. Um, from there, I'm sure you guys can figure out the math. My, I carefully mic this guy, the diameter, cut it in half, subtract it from my top measurement. And I know I'm at 666 thousandths from this surface to rotational center. I'll then put a tool in the tool holder, put it over on the comparator stand, and set the tool height for 666 thousandths. I do like checking this from time to time. Evidently, this is settled or uh, worn in or whatever you want to call it, a half a thou. Because I'm getting it. it's actually, well, I can't remember now what I did. I got to go back and check the math. But I think this is now 665 and a half thou um, distance. No, it's not higher. That's right. It was higher. 600, uh, 666 and a half thou, because this went down, is what it was. So, um, that's it in a nutshell. It's pretty easy. And different tools, I'll set some a little higher on purpose and some a few thousands lower on purpose. Uh, I can't remember which one of the tools I set, but I've got it written down someplace. <laughs>